and early and often Chelsea would be on the attack and lo and behold William Gallus in the 24th giving the Blues the lead and remember Max Chelsea coming off two consecutive 4-0 wins against Spurs oh it's been a while I have a good Johnson 2-0 the professional footballer from Iceland slips up on the left side, but that was a great run to set it up. More from Chelsea as Sunderland Payne for all of their sins. 3-0, a cracking shot by the Finn, Mikael Forsell. What a drubbing. The fabulous Finn turning into super stub. <laughs> oh my God, you've lost it. You've lost it. They love that near post. Samuel Dalabona, 4-0. Great day for the Blues, their third consecutive 4-0 victory. West London is a buzz. Mikael Forsell. Sunny days at the Riverside. Middlesbrough versus Liverpool. Liverpool, Jared Houllier returning. The sun shining on them indeed. Look at this run from Anelka. All the way at the far post. Oh, the volley. No, to the deck. Muscle it in, lad. Smash and grab Emil Heskey on the 33rd minute. Credit Nicholas Anelka, who made that goal. Didi Haman, a little bit unlucky. And Middlesbrough really working hard. A disappointing day for them. There's John Arnarisa with one of the best left foots in the country. He makes it 2-0, and we are deep into this match in the 84th minute. What a strike by Risa. When he scores, he means it with authority. 2-0. Middlesbrough would battle back, trying to get something in the dying minutes. It's minute 89. What? Oh, just wide of the near post, and it was the big Croat. Fortunately, nothing there. They would rue that miss because they would get a goal in the 89th, and it would be Gareth Southgate. Too little, too late for South. We go to Newcastle. Newcastle United versus Ipswich Town. That goal will not count. Hey, Mike Riley denying that man, Alan Shear, early on. That would be a common theme today. Alan Shearer would have his problems with the officiating. Flags down. Marcus Bent, ex of Blackburn Rovers, his ninth goal for his new club. Ipswich Town, Max, surprisingly out in front here early in the second. Was it on? Very close, marginal at best, but Bent could have done a little better with it. He just muscled it in. Right back come the Frenchman, and what a day it was for Frenchmen in England. Laurent Robert from the free kick spot and the left foot. Pounding it in, we are level. His second goal in as many games, Laurent Robert, one of the rising young stars, worth another look, up and over the ball, nothing Matteo Sereni could do. Long clearance here by Sereni, and he finds Marcus Bent. And only three minutes after Newcastle had tied it, Ipswich down back on top. But do not fret, Jordies. This ball goes in, but another disallowed goal. Another goal disallowed by Alan Shearer. He had a little shove in his back, but Newcastle were resolute. Yes, they were, Max. And Alan Shearer, disappointingly, could have had four goals in this game, but he's going to have to settle for one. But what a key strike it was. His 20th in all competitions here. Two minutes from time, and Newcastle escaping the blushes here at St. James's. Robert again involved, and that time not too much contact from Shear. Newcastle United, they know if they want to stay in this title race, they need to get the three points, especially at home, especially against a side like Ipswich. They had a chance. Down goes Acuna. Nothing given. And there would be a penalty kick. And the ball never lies, Max. That's what they oh, say. Alan the... Shearer pulls it wide. The penalty should have not been awarded in the first place. Newcastle blows it. They had it in there. What a game. It's West Ham United at Upton Park as West Ham battled Manchester United. Steve Lomas, what a day for Redheads. First Reese and now Lomas, it's 1-0. Lomas with his first goal in 16 minutes, worth another look. How did he learn how to do that? Steps in front of the defender, puts it home, and right past Fabian Bartes. West Ham United, remember, they defeated Manchester United at Old Trafford, so they would want revenge, and they'd start to oh. click. Backs, soft right foot. What a strike. One of the best strikes we'll see in this show or in any show. Ooh, off the inside, over the head of David James. It all started in the midfield, and Beckham took care of the rest. 
Well done by Paul Scholes to pick out Bex. A lot of goals in the first 25 minutes. Watch this run from Sebastian Schemmel and the finish by Freddy Canute. What is with the Frenchman today? 2-1 West Ham United. This all in the first 20 minutes of the match. Is there a clean sweep on the cards? Now, I don't know, but West Ham coming right back after that Beckham goal. This is just three minutes later. Tough finish there from Canute. Very powerful ball sent in by Schemmel, but off the free kick. Nicky Buck thinks he's oh! Hugo Sanchez. 2-2. Two -two. Hugo Sanchez in the house. Looked like a, a famous Dutch player to me as well. Not too shabby. Take a look, though. Nicky Butt fully extends a bicycle kick from the England international, who is left totally unmarked. What a shootout. More as we're finally into the second half. Manchester United. Oh! That's a case of ball watching, lads. Ball goal slips in there, and it's 3-2. Beckham would have a great day. Unfortunately, this one kept out by the swimmers of Marcus. Oh, gee. For this 22nd, his 13th in the Brem, wraps up their force, and Man United on cruise control at this point, but a little bit left in the gas tank for the Hammers. Yes, Canute on the right side. Look at the youngster, Jermaine Defoe. In there, lad. It's 4-3. 78th minute. Seven goals. What a shootout. However, however, a penalty from David Beckham. Manchester United redemption. This is Villa's Gold Cup, but the race trophies snort. Missing their own Thierry Henry, they still started at a gallop. Bergkamp freed Pires, but the Frenchman could not hurdle the last ditch challenge from Mark Delaney. The breakthrough though soon followed. Viltord's free kick was too hot for Schmeichel. Vieira, then Edu did the rest. Edu's first goal in the Premiership at Arsenal's 31st consecutive goal-scoring Premiership match, a new record. The Gunners' injury count was rising too. Stepanov's the latest victim. Lee Dixon replaced him at half-time and then gave away the penalty that should have got Villa back in the game. Gareth Barry, the man sent sprawling, but the young defender's left foot couldn't beat the right hand of David Seaman. An inspired piece of goalkeeping from England's number one, no wonder Sven Jürgen Eriksson was purring next to the man with the gold cup. But if that was a golden moment, one gold shirt still topped it. The Frenchman Robert Pires produced some magic at the other end to double Arsenal's lead. Tipped by many to become Footballer of the Year at the end of the season, this added fuel to the Gunners' fire. But 2-0 soon became 2-1. Hadges cross dispatched by the classic centre-forwards goal from Dion Dublin. It meant 20 minutes of nail-biting, but Arsenal held on to that amazing away record and their Premiership destiny remains in their own hands. Chris Scudder, Sky Sports. Aston Villa entertaining Arsenal, a big match for the Gunners, and they would rise to the occasion behind the Brazilian Edu, his second goal in as many games himself. Edu. Not to be confused with Emu. And it is 1-0 after a good save by Schmeichel. Make it twice. I'll clean up the mess. Penalty kick for Aston Villa. Denied by the new Colino Divino. Divine Ponytail. David oh, that, that's a stretch. But okay. Gary Barry, look at that word from David Seaman. Sven Jürgen Eriksson looking on. That may have just wrapped up the number one position for him in the World Cup. Then this wonder goal from Robert Pires. I told you, the French would be served today. I'm Humphreys and I'm free. Second floor, haberdasheries. Ooh la la. Absolutely breathtaking stuff from the Frenchman. His 10th of the season, Mustafa Haji crossing over Dion Dublin finishing here 21 minutes from time however that would be all Aston Villa would get on this day disappointing loss for them a key win for the Gunners who do you prefer Dion Dublin in the fifth minute and that's great skill steps in front of Unsol one-on-one -on -one with Brad Fidel and with Robbie Fowler you know there's only going to be one result and he tucks it away quite brilliantly for his 13th goal of the season Great skill, nodding it in front of the defender and just slots it away, cool as you like. Then three minutes later, great ball, Alan Smith, left foot and 
Fowler once again, leaving Friedel no chance. 14th goal of the season. Great ball in by Smith, but the way Fowler steps in front of Henningberg, just gorgeous to watch. Chances few and far between for Blackburn Rovers. The best came from Gillespie on for a first half.